So, good evening everyone and welcome to our lovely people webinar. And tonight, I mean, look at all these beautiful faces. Anyone on here could be our beautiful person tonight. But it is actually <laughs> the lovely Andy Winter. So, <clears throat> welcome Andy. It's really lovely to see you, as always. It's always good to chat to you. I love talking to you. <clears throat> so, where should we start with our lovely people webinar tonight? <laughs> Would you like to tell anybody, just in case there's people who don't know you and people often listen to the recording and they might not know who you are. So do you want to tell us a little bit about you and you know how you came to be a lovely person? <laughs> <You're born today. laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Andy Winter and I live here in Vermont in, uh, in the United States and I have a practice here um where i share the share this understanding with folks and um and i i got involved in this conversation 25 or 26 years ago i think now um back when dick and bettinger used to live here in vermont and so it was shortly after dick had gotten involved actually and um and i've been in one way or another engaged with this work ever since uh, um, most of the time through uh, education, uh, a teacher, an administrator, my wife and I and, and, and some other folks started a couple of different schools, also high schools, and uh, the principals were fundamental to the, to the culture and the formation of the schools. Um, so I guess that's my back, my, you know, sort of my, the skinny of my background. I've had a chance to study and work with George and Linda and, I, I had a, uh, numerous opportunities to meet Sid and spend time with him. And um, Dickon and I are best buds, and I got to spend a lot of time with him. And, um, and then all the other, you know, Roger Mills. And I've been in the conversation long enough that all, the, all these amazing people um, have uh, I've just had a chance to, uh, to just get really touched by them. So that's the, I guess that's my background. Mm. Oh, so that's, that's what bring That's what that's what brings me here. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> so it was the fact that you were Dickens' friend. Is that how you got introduced to this? Because through Dickens. Oh, uh, so no. My my introduction actually came from a, a woman named Barbara Jordan, who was um, my my now wife, Alyssa McLean's, um, a professor at, of hers at the University of Vermont, and she had a holistic health class and. Um, and Alyssa one day said, you know, gosh, I have this woman, um, this teacher who I think you would really be fascinated by. You know, I think you'd really find what she has to say interesting. So I said, oh, great. So I went to the, it was an evening class. I went to the next class and I came a little late and sat in the back and uh, there were, it was a small group. And, um, and Barb, who's now a dear friend and has been um, since a couple of days after that class, but Barb was talking about, um, about thought. She did, she had a practice with Dickon actually. It was the first, I think it was the first, um, aside from the Pranskys and Roger Mills, I think it was the first counseling practice, um, certainly in New England and, and maybe in the States. And um, there were three of them um, that taught, um, and it used to be called Psychology of Mind, but they, they all had a private practice uh, in the same building together. And so she worked with Dickon. And, and Barb was talking about um, how, I mean, that day, I was one of those folks who heard something um, that sort of changed everything for me, but not right then. <laughs> um, so Barbara was talking about how thought um, creates your experience. And then she was talking about how, um, how your past, like everyone's past, um, doesn't matter. But that's what I heard. So this woman's up there. So, so, so my background at the time, just to, 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 to shed a little light on that, was like I was, a, I was a man who was trying to be a good guy in the world. Like I, 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 loved, I liked life a lot. I, I wanted to be of service. And, 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 I, and I was usually pretty happy, but sometimes not as happy. And I was going to different classes. Like um, that was sort of in the time of Robert Bly. So I was in a men's group. And... I was in a, in a group where I was healing my inner child. Um, 
and I was in a group um, for adult children of alcoholics because I grew up in it. So I had all, I was in all these groups where I was trying to just make myself better, trying to sort of fix, fix what was wrong still, you know, something that was sort of wrong. And, um, and all that stuff was about like going in the past. All those groups were about going in the past. So here's this woman, Barbara Jordan, who, who um, bless her heart, was telling the truth, but I didn't know it. And she was saying, um, your past doesn't matter, basically. You know, just it's, you get a fresh start every second, every instant. And um, I left the class furious. Like, I, I, I was... <laughs> Uh, let's just I was pissed off when I left the class. I was really um I guess I was just really uncomfortable in 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 my skin with what she was saying. It just mm. it, I just felt like it was so disrespectful. Um because I had been doing all this work, you know, working really hard. And then um later that later that night um I was I wasn't with Alyssa, I was with her roommate in college and who was also at that same lecture. Gabriella is her name. And um and she was on the top bunk and I was on the bottom bunk and um and and we were just talking and I was still really I was kind of ranting, you know, and which was uncharacteristic of me. I was really caught up in it. And uh and Gabriella was, was from Germany and, and she had this um she had this classic thick, long, blonde hair, and it was in a braid that went down to like her calves, you know, just this long rope of a braid. <laughs> and she flipped her head over and she looked at me upside down from the top bunk. So this braid just went brrr, right, all the way to the ground. And she said, and, it, and, and this is the only reason why it got through my ego, was she looked at me and she said, do you really, do you, she didn't know the answer to the question, so it was really innocent. I didn't have anything to push back against. My ego couldn't fight it. She said, do you, something like, do you really think you're getting, you can find what you need by going in the past? Hmm. That's all she said. Do you really think you can find what you're looking for by going into the past? And, and for me, Everything Barb Jordan had said prior to that was able to now get by my belief system because like my, my belief system about how the world work kind of fell apart. And, um, and I looked at her and I, I, I just started crying and I just said, no, of course not. How could it? And she didn't have an answer to that. I mean, she, I kind of freaked her out. Um, um, and, and I kept crying for quite a while because I just like, all of the all of this thinking I had about um, that I wasn't okay and that other people weren't okay and that people need to change and that there were problems inside people and like I just started to see that the, the very nature of my experience was in fact self-created and I just had never known it until then and um, and I mean, everything changed. It just changed. You know, I just didn't look at relationships the same way. I didn't look at communication the same way. I, um, I got, you know, I, I just got a lot softer. Um, I, I, um, yeah, I think life just changed for me in a really sweet way. And then that, then I heard Dickon was speaking in a couple of days on campus too at the University of Vermont. And so I went to, I went to meet him and, and we really hit it off and I just loved listening to him. And then, um, I just kind of jumped, I just sort of jumped right in. I just knew that this was going to be at the heart of my work forever because it's at the heart of everything. And that I saw that, you know, that I, I mean, for me, what I saw is if I could feel that much peace in an instant, um, then anyone could. And, and that there was just something really extraordinary there that I wanted to be a part of and share in some way. So that was my, that was my beginning. Um, and um, I, within a year, I, I had a chance to meet Sid Banks and, you know, all these other folks. And, um, and it, my life just was really different, very different yeah. as a result. I mean, it was the same, but it was different. Oh, that, that's really beautiful. That's a, a lovely story. Um, and one of the things that I loved, I mean, sometimes in some of the conversations we've had, you've shared some amazing things about your daughter. And I just think your, your daughter is just so blessed 
Oh, my internet connect connected. <laughs> it's unstable again. Yeah, I think your daughter is really, really blessed to have been brought up in a household with this understanding. You know, with kind of hmm. people around her. And I know you said like education. You're very passionate about education. Um, and I know some of the people that sometimes listen to these webinars are very interested in trying to get this understanding into schools more. So what do you, you know, how do you share it with children and, mm. and how do you think that, that it changed how you brought your daughter up having this understanding? I know you can't know what it would have been like if you hadn't, but you know, just what you see around that. Um. Yeah, so my daughter, Emmy, um, she's 14 now. She just turned 14. She's graduating eighth grade this Friday, actually. She's been out in the, in the woods with her class all week, um, and they get back today. Actually, right as soon as this is over, she's, um, she's uh, going to get picked up from school. Um, and, I mean, I can't even – I mean, I know I would – my, I love my parents. Like I love my parents. They're both the they they're both dead now. And I really my parents, you know, they did the very best they could given how they see the world and what they knew. And bless their hearts for it. Like my mom, I guess she looked up. My mom was um, one of the hardest working people I've ever met. You know, and 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 all of it for for us for the family. And um and um. But, you know, they, they only knew what they knew. And, and so um, it was kind of a, at times, like, you know, I don't, I don't think saying it's a bru it was a brutal household would be an understatement at times. I mean, it was just really tough. And so, so um, so I can only imagine had I not run into this understanding that I would be I would share a lot more of that kind of experience with my daughter than I do now. Mm. You know, I can only imagine that more of that, that would show up. Now, some of it still shows up. Like it, it's like it's in habits. Like it's just amazing how, um, how, how insecurity, you know, just because this understanding, uh, you know, showed up in my life and, and I understand that my thinking creates my experience and I understand that like, we're just having, we're just conscious beings living in a world of form and that it's all an illusion. I mean, I get all that, except we also live in the world of form and it all looks really real most of the time, right? <laughs> it, just looks like, it looks real. When, my, when, Emmy's, when Emmy's not being so grateful for her father, um, <laughs> when does that which, happen? <laughs> which, which does happen, no. uh, you know, when she's slamming a door or just, you know, take, taking out her, her thinking on me, I, um, I still, I still can take it personally, you know, and I can still think about how wrong it is. You know, like, it's just, this is wrong. This, I have this idea and I have this, this reaction that's, that is, that is, um, sometimes that's, that's just habitual. You know, that was like, I just saw in my own parents over and over and over again. And, uh, and, and I can only imagine that that would just manifest much more in life without you know if i didn't have this understanding so instead what i get is i get the chance to just let go i mean i just feel like this understanding has given me a freedom that i can't even begin to like express how grateful i am because no matter how caught up i get or no matter how insane i get or no matter how insane my daughter gets or how crazy the world looks I get to just let go of that as it, that, that, that experience shows up and I know it's going to pass. I just know that that experience is being generated from within me or via me and, and that a new one is about to show up all the time. So it's like, I don't need to do anything except know that in a moment it's going to look different. Not always better. <laughs> Thankfully, not always worse. But it's just going to look different. And, um, and that, that if I don't know what to do or what to say right now, well, in a little while, I probably will. Or, or if what I want to say, you know, is ugly, 
doesn't feel, you know, if I, what I want to say is, is not loving, it's probably not helpful. Mm. You know, that changes everything. Like that, 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 I, that idea alone um, changes everything. Um, so um, I still say things that aren't loving. <laughs> uh, but much less frequently than I would otherwise. And, um, and so, yeah, I may just grow up in a world where it seems, well, like yeah, I remember one day she came home from school and she said, or no, she, was, she, she had had a sleepover at someone's house, I think. And we were, I was driving her to school like the next Monday and she said, can I ask you a question? And anytime she did that, especially as a little kid, I had to sort of buckle my seatbelt because I knew she was going to just knock me out of the park with her question. And she said, I said, yeah, she said, well, so when I'm not around, do you and mom fight a lot? (laughs) Right. What a great question. And I said, I looked at her in a a mirror, you know, in the rear of a mirror. And I said, no, no, we don't. I don't think we fight more with you or without you. You know, we don't, it's just, I don't, and she said, and she, and she said, why not? And we so I was like, well, I guess we're just not that interested in it. You know, we just we just don't talk to each other much if we want to fight because it's it's just not going to help. And and she said, I thought so. She said, I thought that's probably true. She said, but I was just curious because you know my my friends' houses, there's a lot more of that. There's a lot more fighting. And she said, it just seemed really different, you know? So it's like, you know, she, she, as Emmy, as Emmy grew up and she sort of thought how we interact is normal. And I think it really is normal, but unless we get caught up in our thinking, Um, but it's, it just sort of changed everything for her, you know, growing up as a teenager who knows that her thinking is going to change any minute and she doesn't have to believe it. That changes, that changes everything. Um, um, you know, there's a sweet story. Um, she was in third or fourth grade and she went, she went to a Montessori, she still goes to a Montessori school. She's leaving there this year because they only go to eighth grade, but she was in third or fourth grade. And at this school, I, I love Montessori because um, it's about like handing over more responsibility f- for their education to the kids, right? So that they know this is, it's not, they're not just doing what the teacher says, they have to sort of create their, their learning to, to some extent. They're really involved in, in a different way. And so even problem solving around um, human interactions, they give more responsibility to the kids. So before, they, before kids can approach a teacher with a problem with another kid, they have to try to work it out themselves. You know? So every day, I mean, is one of these kids who just, she just sort of like to do things the right way and she's pretty happy. And, you know, so every day I pick her up from school and I'd say, did you get in trouble today? You know, <laughs> knowing that she didn't. And she'd say, no, no. I said, oh, darn, maybe tomorrow. Or, you know, <laughs> did you go to the principal today or did you this? And she no, no. I said, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe tomorrow. And then I picked her up. I said, you know, did you get in trouble today? And she said, no, but I did have to go to the peace rug. And the peace rug is, um, it's literally a little rug they have in the room in the corner where, where when one student is having a conflict with, with another student, they invite them to the peace rug right? <laughs> and, um, and they try and work it out together. And which is just really sweet, right? I mean, it's just great. And if they can't work it out, they can get a teacher involved or there's a mediation process or whatever. But I said, really? Yeah, I said, who did you ask to go there? I she said, no, someone asked me. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really <laughs> exciting. That's really fun. Yeah, who was it? And her best friend, blah, blah, blah. And so, so it was her best friend who tends to be really volatile. It's not, it wasn't super surprising, you know. And I said, well, um, well, tell me about it. She goes, well, there's not much to say. And I said, well, why did she invite you there? And she said, well, I still don't really know. And I was like, oh, did you meet there? And she said, yeah, okay, I could tell me. So she said, okay, well, here's what happened, Dad. It's like, I could tell this person was really mad at me for um for the last week or more like she was just really upset with me and and then when she invited me to the peace rug like i knew it must be really serious she said so i got to the peace rug 
I'm like, I'm getting choked up. I got to the piece rug earlier than her. You know, I got her there before her. And I looked at her across the room and I just thought, she said, I thought about how much I, I just like her and how much I just appreciate having her as a friend. She said, no, she just kept this really, really sweet feeling, you know, and she said, and, and so when, when, when she came over and sat down on the rug, you know, she looked at me and she said, and, and she said, I looked at her and I said, you know, I really love you. And she said, whatever I've done that's hurt your feelings, she said, I just, I'm so sorry because all I want to do is be your friend. And the girl said, okay. And they held hands and left the peace rug. Like she just jumped time. You know, she just, she skipped the whole, we have to work this out. And she just went straight to love. Like she just went straight to the love in, in such a vulnerable way that there, that it, it, it just melted any conflict that existed. There was no conflict anymore because the concern for the other girl was that maybe they weren't close or maybe there was something wrong or maybe, you know, and it's, and I just think, you know, would that have shown up without this understanding, you know, growing up, maybe, you know, perhaps, mm -hmm. I don't know, but it shows up so frequently. She has so much faith in, in, in that things are just going to work out. They're just always going to work out. Um, if we if we get our, our egos out of the way, if we get our, you know, if we get our righteousness out of the way, um, that's massive. Like, I don't, I don't know what it would have been like to grow up like that. I hardly know what it's like to live like that now, and I've been involved with it for, for a long time. And, um, and so, yeah, it's a game changer. It changes, you know, it changes everything. Mm. Yeah, that's just beautiful. <laughs> mm. It kind of takes away anything, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> to say anything to that, isn't it? It's just Yeah, it is. It's lovely. Yeah. And it's just Yeah. What's so amazing about that, it, it, it's those things that, you know, they might, it, it does actually sound absolutely massive, but you kind of see those sorts of things and you hear things like that again and again and again around people who've come across the principles that it's just, I mean, when you were talking earlier and you talked about the, the fact that we get a new start in every second, I just, I just love the whole, and it is, we're so ingrained like the way i was brought up and the way you know it's kind of like oh let's sit down and talk about this let's get into the details of this story what you right. did and what i did and what you said and what i said and why what you said was wrong and made me feel like this and it's so it's so heavy and it's so hard and when you kind of say do you know what with this understanding you just kind of like when you said about you and your wife we just don't really want to talk about it and I know that has, that's changed for me and my partner, lovely, lovely Russ, who I'm with. He's just, you know, I, there was one day a little while ago and I was, something was going on at home and I kind of came into the room and I just knew he was a little bit pissed off. I just knew he was a little bit cross. So I just was like, I'm just going to leave you to it. I said, is there anything you want to say or should I just leave you to it? And he's just like, yeah, that, that's cool. Just, just leave it for now and that was it and no more that was it nothing else has ever been said since that that's it there wasn't haven't asked him what it was I have no idea don't know who did what don't know who said what don't know what just the next time we saw each other it was gone there was nothing more to be said nothing more to be done and it's that it's magic isn't it as I can see the, the me before I came across this, it would be even later when he was starting for, to feel better, I'd be like poking the bear, you know, I'd be kind of going, well, what was it then? What had I done then? What, <laughs> what made you feel like that? <laughs> and it's kind of just yeah. seeing that there just isn't, there isn't anything. We just get that new start. We just, because 
we just know yeah how it's created where it's created from it doesn't nothing needs to be different it's fine mm. it is it is simple and life-changing yes so shall we see if anyone has got any questions or anything anyone wants to kind of say to oh look maria hands up straight up <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're not doing very well, Andy. She wants to take over. <laughs> Good, I hope so. <laughs> I, I love this. I've got it on speak of you, and it just felt like you were just, it was just me and you, Andy, in this <laughs> webinar. So, um, <clears throat> I haven't got a question about anything that you actually said. Um, I've got a question that's been mulling around in my own mind, and it's to do with. Um, whether there's actually anything, uh, whether there's actually such a thing as free will. <laughs> because everything comes from mind, doesn't it? Every thought comes from that same place. If I have a thought to shout at Ash, for example, which look at her, I don't very often get that kind of thought. But if I didn't get the thought not to shout at him, I might shout at it. So it's, it's been mulling around for a while. And I just really would like to know what your take is on it. Jen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. Um, that's a really interesting question. And, and, um, and I, and I think the answer is yes. And I mean, from the way I see it, I have no idea really, but the answer is yes and no. I mean, I feel like, um, I, I feel like the, the, the will part of it for me, as I see it in the world has, has a little bit to do with the, with, with the fact that we live in the, in the world of form, even though we're conscious beings living in, in, in this sort of this reality of consciousness all around us, and you know, and that, that even though things are formless, but but they look like form, you know, and even though even solid objects are um, are predominantly empty space, I still live in a world of this desk being a solid object. You know, like if I bump into it with my shin, it's going to hurt. Um, um, and so I feel like on on the level of of form, um, we we have free will in that in that we 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 can have a multitude of ideas show up, but we still have some choice as to as to which we um, feed or pay more attention to and act on, you know, and um, and. And that's where the free will part of it comes from. Now, do we get to choose what thoughts occur to us? Absolutely not. I mean, I've never met anyone that can do that, that can choose the thoughts that come to them. Um, we get what we get. It's like weather, you know, we just get it. Um, but, but in that instant that it shows up, The, the 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 notion of acting on it or not is i think there's um there's some guidance there so is that free will like you know it sort of becomes like if depending on how deep we go into this question for me it becomes like is there a me to be free <laughs> or not so at the level that i exist where i as an entity uh, taking form I'm, I'm here i have to have some ability to navigate life by via some sort of cho choosing but at, but if you go deeper than that i don't think free will is necessary do you do you understand what i mean is i think at the level of like where like do trees have free will i don't i don't think that's really part of the picture is that i think i think when uh, i don't know but when they they have consciousness um and um when we the more I let go of myself, mm. and, and I don't mean physically let go, like every word, none, none of these words work, right? But the more I, I don't 
take my idea of myself seriously, the less will there is in my life. And the more the, I just do, and, it, and, it, and it's of service. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question. Hopefully not. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for that, Andy. That's, yeah, does d- that help at all? I mean, is that... It's... Um, it kind of, you said this, you said very similar things to the things that have been mulling around in my mind. Um, but I liked what you said, and I can't remember what the exact words were already now. Um, but what I heard was there's something about the eye that is underneath everything. Hmm. And that, that not needing a will. Because sometimes it doesn't feel like I've got a choice. Sometimes I'm caught up in my thinking. And it's not until I notice it that then I think I've got a choice. But for that period of time when I don't notice the kind of thinking I'm in, it doesn't feel like I'm choosing anything. Mm. But that's working on the basis that all of this stuff that's going on in my mind is who I am and it's not. It's not. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying is that when we drop below that, when we're, when we're just part of this, you know, we're, when, 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 when I'm just one little wave of this sea of consciousness and you are too, what does free will have to do with anything? Mm. You know, when we're just being, free will is like, I don't know, is, is it all free will? I mean, it's just, it's an irrelevant, it kind of becomes like, that's, that's a question for me as a human being, trying to be a human being and interact in the world. But if I like zoom out far enough or zoom in far enough, whichever way you want to look at it, you know, if you go deep enough or you zoom out far enough, that becomes kind of a, a moot question to me. I don't mean it in a bad way. I just, no. it, it just doesn't have any relevance. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, because we just sort of know we just are you know Uh, and so anyway that's getting out there a little ways but (laughs) that's really hit me that um it's the question is me as a human being trying to be a human being right that's i think that's the number of it i really appreciate that andy Thank you, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Great. Any other questions or thoughts? You can put your hand up if you've got a. You know, oh, okay, lovely. Have you? Yeah, you've unmuted yourself. And go. <laughs> I'm. I'm interested in. I uh, mean, it's been great. Really good. Well, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> you said, you said um, that you started some schools. And yes. I'm interested in what your experience was with the schools. That would be really interesting to know about. What well, lovely. you saw with using this, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, the first, the first school we created was, um, it was called Shackleton Schools after Sir Ernest Shackleton the Explorer. And it was, a, it was an expedition-based high school. So um, the premise was, um, Another gentleman, Luke O'Neill, a dear friend of mine, not then, I didn't know him, but he, was, he had been an outward bound instructor for a long time. And, and he, um, he saw the transformation that happened in kids and adults when they would go out on these, in these like, you know, he had 16 people in a, in a 16 foot pulling boat for three weeks and they have to sort of deal with it and live with each other and, and sleep in the boat and like everything they did was in the boat. And he, he sort of, he saw how people transformed for over a week long experience or a two week experience or a month long experience. And then he also saw that like for some of the kids that came from tougher backgrounds that it didn't stick. Like they, 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 they got really touched by life and by, by, by each other and this kind of family they created, but they thought it was the family. 
right? That's what we do. We, we want to, we want to give permission for like, we suddenly feel good. So it's because, oh, we met the person of our dreams, right? Or, or we found the sport that makes sense to us or, or it's meditation. Oh, I feel better because I'm meditating. Or, you know, we blame external things for feeling better. And, um, um, and so he, he thought, wow, what if there was a school? I mean, he didn't know that, but he knew that they had this transformation. And so he thought, what if there was a, a school where students did those kind of experiences as their entire high school program? So for four years, they went out in the world and they did meaningful things and you integrated school into that. Like, what if there were no walls? What, you know? And so I had taught, I'd been teaching graduate school in a program just like that. So I was teaching teachers how to teach out in the world. And every semester we would be in a different bioregion of North America. Um, um, in fact, I took them to, to meet uh, Sid Banks once on Salt Spring Island, but that's a different story. Um, and, um, uh, and so I applied for the job to be the, to, the, the architect to create the curriculum for this school and to be the first educator to take the first class through the first four years. And I, um, and, and then, and shortly after, well, after my third interview, um, they didn't offer me that job. Instead, they offered me the job of head of school, um, which prior to my third interview, which was with the board of directors, wasn't a position. Um, but they realized that the executive director wasn't, he didn't really know what I knew. I mean, they, there was something that I was talking about that just really resonated with the board of directors. And these were, really high profile people like it doesn't matter but they were high profile people um and um and so i said great and so then we just started and we we had a small office in south boston and no kids and a tiny budget and um we worked for almost nothing and my wife at the time was going to harvard uh graduate school of education um so i, I had housing there in in harvard and and would bike into uh, south boston every day and we just looked at you know, the question of like, what, what do kids need in the world and um, to be successful? And, and the first thing to me is this understanding. That's what everyone really needs. Like from there, it's, it doesn't really matter. Like if once people realize that there's this, that they are, not that there's an infinite potential they can tap into, that they are an example of it. Like it just, the game changes. It's like, it's like going to a casino and knowing they're just going to keep giving you money every time you lose money. Like what's the risk? There's no risk. You're just like, let it roll, you know, give me sevens. And you just say, like, yeah. And then you're, if, if you lose your money, they just give you more. Like when you realize that life is kind of like that, that love isn't something that, that you have to hang on to um, or get from anywhere else. When you realize that like you're, you, you, you are um, infinitely creative, infinitely. Human beings are just, it's mind blowing, our capacity to, to create. I mean, and we create really awful stuff and we create really amazing stuff, um, but, but, but it's just unbelievable, you know? And so what, I just thought, wow, what if kids started with that? How would the relationship, Andy, I can, can anybody hear? I can't hear you. You've gone. You know, I've lost sound with you. Has everybody lost? Yeah, I think we've lost sound. Oh. oh. In their previous um, educational experience. So all of them were unsuccessful. Some had been kicked out of school. Um, I, we had one, a uh, couple of kids who has either come to this school or go into a juvenile detention center. Um, some were drug, we had a drug dealer. We had, we had a girl who was um, truant. Um, we had a girl who was truant like 72% of the school year. <laughs> um, prior, the prior school year. Brilliant girl, very smart, bored out of her mind. She just didn't want to go. Um, so anyway, the school was for all those kids. And so then we just, um, tried to create opportunities for them to like explore and learn and, and, and experience, um, 
this understanding and how it works in the world. So, I, you know, I, every week we had a community meeting and I would share in one way or another, and it usually wasn't direct teaching of, of the principles. It was just sort of helping them see the truth behind it. Um, but then it, once or twice a year, we would also have like Dick and Bettinger come and Keith Blevins and Sandy Crod and Ken Manning. And um, we had women from the Modelo Project come, you know, and they were amazing. And um, we had like all just, it's incredible who we got to come. Um, and, and, then, and then the educational program, I just found like during the interview process, um, I just found the most like hopeful and, and intelligent and life-loving people I could find to be the teachers. Because <laughs> it's like, how can you go wrong? So, so then it's like, so you have these kids who are dis disenchanted with life overall, but who just are like, they're willing to take this massive risk and this massive change in their life to do all these crazy things. You have these teachers who, 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 who love life and like to do stuff in the world and love kids and they and, and are, and, 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 um, and then you have, you know, enough people around with this understanding to kind of keep kind of pouring it into the community. Cause there's a certain point where I think, you know, I don't know what percentage it is, but there's a certain point where a culture shifts when, a, when enough people have this understanding, people just around them start to function differently. Not everyone, but it just, it, things change. And, and so, um, so that's what we did. You know, we started out with nine kids. We didn't have a campus. We had two vans and, um, parents dropped their kids off in a parking lot in South Boston and off we went. Um, and in the, you know, during the next year there was fundraising and we bought a campus and we built buildings over time. And I mean, uh, our fundraising, um, was amazing. Um, and the kids are just, you know, they're, Choked up again. Um, not many of them graduated originally of the original group. Not many of them made it through, but they all their all their lives changed a lot. And it's just funny that this that question came up today because yesterday one of the girls, uh, young women, she's now you know a woman, um, came to visit us here, um, and um, she was one of the first graduates from that school and went on to um, she just doing you know she runs a a Buddhist meditation center in, in Boston. And it's just like as happy as can be. And she knows she can do anything in the world. She's a filmmaker. She's, um, she's just like, she's just a really great human being who's touching a lot of people's lives. Um, and, and that's, you know, in one way or another, I feel like that kind of experience, most of the kids had that kind of experience. Um, eventually the school, after eight years, the school shut down, um, there were funding issues and, and, and management issues at, at high, higher levels than me as the head of school. Um, I'm sure I had my own issues, but um, uh, it, it, it was just difficult to operate financially over time. But it was a beautiful experiment. And, and we just got them around really amazing people too that weren't educators. Um, Wow, so. that sounds that sounds totally amazing. Did it, have you have you um, reported it or written it up or done anything? You know, like like Modelo the book. You know, it sounds like you could. Um, no, we, we didn't. Um, there was there was a person who who did their uh, doctoral dissertation on on that education that what we did at. at um, at, at Shackleton School, and um, and actually, after my wife and I left there, she was the director. She ended up being the director of curriculum. My wife, Alyssa, and I was the head of school. Um, we left there, and we were traveling um, a, a lot for about a year or more. And um, we got contacted by the same guy who had done his dissertation, and he was opening a school in Boulder, Colorado, called the Watershed School. And then he invited us out to see if we'd help start that one too. So we moved there for a while and um, helped start that. But that's about the. I mean. It was documented through a video that um, this woman, Ashley, who visited us yesterday, um, she made as her departing gift to the school as a, as a senior, she made a video about the school, which I think is on my um, Facebook page. If not, I can put it there. But there hasn't been anything uh, major documented about it now. Um, I still get uh, calls 
you know, with some frequency about it, though. It's really known. I mean, uh, the kids, we spoke at Harvard Graduate School. Um, uh, it was really, it was really sensational uh, experiment. And, um, and if I knew then what I know now, I would do a lot of things differently, too. Um, Love, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it would be really great if you would put to put the video on your Facebook page, you know, anybody can find you on Facebook, Andy Winter. It would be a really great video too, if you don't mind. Sure. No, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Really yeah it's called Touch. She, she called it Touch the World, which I thought was really, really yeah. beautiful. Um, beautiful title. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't really, I mean, it's from a, from a, from a student's perspective, kind of an inside out view of the school and trying to share it with other people. But it's, uh, I can't watch it without bawling. Of course, you know, I cry all the time, so it doesn't really matter. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, it was, you know, it was like inside it. So the stories inside it were things like, um, I mean, some of these kids, like it was tough. Like, you know, they, they were taught, they were, they were taught, like they had tough lives, you know, we had a kid who grew up in an abandoned car for the first three years of his life. Like this, he lived in, you know, with his mom and who was an addict and um, until she got clean, like they're the loveliest people. And, but like, like just grew up with really hard times. And so there were things like, I remember um, some of these kids, like someone would say something and, and, and if they're speaking honestly to them, it might be, um, because we were pretty honest with each other, they might take offense to it. And so when you, when you get offended from where they live, you like get in each other's face. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like, it would go from this meeting to like two kids standing like with their chest touching each other going, you want some of this? You know, like, <laughs> like you know, and, and I mean, like to blows on them. I mean, it was just like, boom, it would just erupt into this thing. And I would talk to them and, and, and about it. Cause like, for us, it was kind of startling because that wasn't the world I lived in. And, and what, you know, what they said was, oh, no, this is what we do. Like, this is what, like, this is how it works where we're from. Like, this is what you have to do because if you don't do that, people just, they'll, they'll knock you down and keep knocking you down because you, you don't stand up for yourself. So, like, they said, we just, this is what we know to do. And so I, you know, we just had to have these conversations like, well, what if there was, what if there was another way? And they're like, well, what other way could there be? You know, I mean, like they really couldn't imagine that there was another way to interact other than when someone says something that disrespects you, that you have to defend your, you know, that there was something to defend in the first place. So once, once like those kids, any of them got a hold of the fact that like, once their egos got out of the way, there was nothing to push against. And then they came up with all these new ways of dealing with conflict, you know, that, that made sense versus were what made sense when you're on the street corner in Harlem. Because mm -hmm. something makes different sense there maybe than it does in like rural Massachusetts in a little farmhouse with a bunch of other kids who are trying to turn their lives around, you know, or once, you know, I had, this girl, I had this girl who, um, she came to the school. I didn't know this. Um, I think she knew. Her parents didn't know. But I met her. She came to the school. I met her, and something told me she was pregnant. I don't know. Like, I just kind of somehow had this feeling that she was pregnant. I didn't know. She did, hadn't had a physical before. There were a number of circumstances around it. Anyway, so she needed a physical anyway to be able to be at the school because that's a requirement, you know, from, from the state. And so we arranged to have a, her visit a physician. And, and I just said to the physician ahead of time who was a friend of the school, you know, if you can find out if she's pregnant or not, that'd be really helpful. I just, I said, she, I, I just wonder. Anyway, turns out she was pregnant. Um, and um, she had, and for her family and everything, she needed to leave the school. It wasn't, a, not a problem. It's just like, that's how it worked out. Right. And I was driving her to the bus station. I remember to go back to New York city and, and she was only at the school for like a week. And I asked her like, what did she pick up on it? You know, 
what, what did she learn, if anything, you know, during the time there? And she said, she looked at me and she started crying and she said, you know, um, I never thought I would meet anyone who had a harder start to life than I did. And, um, and, and she was talking about this other student who had shown up to us who, um, who, who for the first, I don't know, three years of her life, her, her mother had a disorder where she would, um, when people weren't looking, she would poke her daughter with pins these tiny pins all over her body so her daughter would get these rashes and swell up and have to go to the hospital and then they, they, they could never find out what was wrong with her and this went on for like a long time like years until finally a video camera caught the mother doing this and then um and and um and she needed help obviously to and the the state took her kid the kid went to the grandmother as the, as this child got older the grandmother found the school and then this kid came to us and and she was really sweet i mean like she was she was really afraid of life at first but she um in the orient too in the summer we would have a longer orientation process where they would go hiking for a week and spend time out in the wilderness with each other and like do things they didn't think they could do. And something sort of, she sort of broke free. Like she, she realized during that time that what she thought was possible and what was possible were completely different, you know, which is kind of the, that's the crux of it, isn't it? Is like when we realize that what we think is real and what we think is possible is just like the tiniest glimpse of what really is possible. It all changes. And so, so then when she came to the school to show, she showed up for the school, she was more alive than she'd ever been before in her life to her. Like she was more aware of how much life there was to live. And, um, and that really affected this other girl who was leaving the school because she was pregnant, you know, and it's things like that over and over again that we saw that just, um, you know, people just get touched by, by people around them when they're waking up to how um, I don't know how beautiful life really is and how how much there is to do and see and, and enjoy and in this moment, whatever this moment is, you know, that it's like when when people start to realize that their past that her past, when she started to just entertain the idea that maybe this torture she went through as a child, literal torture, has nothing at all to do with whether or not she can have a good life. That changes everything. Because prior to that, she really thought that, that, it was, that if this happened, then I'm going to be an insecure, miserable person for the rest of my life who has to deal with this. And when you realize what if that's not true, just the moment you even consider that your life changes, you know, um, because it's not true that what happened 30 seconds ago does not decide the quality of your experience in this second. It just can't. It's just life doesn't work like that. It's, it's immediate. It's instantaneous. My entire experience for my entire existence will always be created in this instant. And that's all I get. And now this instant over and over and, 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 and that can be really like, like in a way kind of scary to look at cause it's so different. And then otherwise it's just so refreshing because, um, Because you just get to participate in life unfolding instead of like, how do I make my life better? Or what do I do to, you know, make my life better? Or how do I win? Like, if you've already won, there's no, there's no winning. You know, it's like, it's like athletes who, who play for the joy of playing. They just perform at a much higher level than athletes, athletes who play to win. I mean, and when they're out there, they'll do everything in their power to, to try to win points, but that's the joy of it. Like when they play for that and then when they lose, they haven't really lost. I mean, because it's not, they, they got to do what they love. 
So it's not, you know, they, they play more freely. Well, when we all play more freely in life, what if, we, what if our relationships, what if we treated our relationships that same way? It changed, you know, what if we treated our work that way? What if, what if when we're stopped in a traffic jam, we looked at, you know, and, it, and it's not something we can do like, oh, I have a new assignment. Here's your assignment. Go out and like suck the marrow from the bone every moment of your life. Go on, tell me how it works out. I mean, I can tell you how it's going to work out. Like, you're going to be miserable because um, you're going to be trying to do something that's already happening. Like, you're going to be trying to manufacture something that can't be manufactured. The moment is here every second. Every, and, and the more we just sort of wake up to, like, the freshness. Of, I just looked outside and I can see this blue sky and it's like, it's amazing. You know, and the moment we just take ourselves, the moment our, our thinking doesn't include ourselves and we're just in the world in life, you know, we have the experience of being a child again where we, we, we're just doing whatever it is that is in front of us. And we're doing it to the best of our ability and, 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 and sometimes we're going to get upset and then we're going to find something new and we're going to do that. And, 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 and we're just having fun living life or being lived by life, which is really different than how I grew up, which was trying to please and trying to do it all right and trying to fight back and trying to do it all wrong to fight back and um, trying to fix what, what doesn't need to be fixed because it can't be broken. You know, when, you know, when, when, edu when, when, when students, when parents, when educators, when, when any person sees another person, no matter what they're showing in the physical world, when they see them as completely whole and healthy, it, ch it changes everything. Like the, it, 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 what you do, what you say, what they hear, if nothing's said, like there's something that happens that changes the very nature when, uh, uh, you know, and it's on a level like b below form maybe, but it's like when, when one wave of consciousness acknowledges another perfect wave of consciousness and it's just there, we're not separate. We're, we're not separate. Nope. You and I, like we're talking as if we're separate, you know, we, we can't be. There's no, there's like that, that's an illusion. And when we, when any of us start to get a glimpse of, of, of the fact that any experience of separation is merely our thinking, getting the best of us for that moment. Um, And in another moment, we'll see that there's no separation. It just cha it changes, it changes. Yeah, change it changes everything for me anyway. I can't imagine it not changing it for other people. And then I just think on a when I think about that on a global, you know, we have our own uber craziness that's going on right now in the United States of America. I'll say. Um, and and which is pretty alarming to me, but you know when when I just it, it's so insignificant compared to what we're talking about right now, mm. because the in this understanding and the truth behind the words we're using to describe this understanding is is um, everything necessary to transform the world for people to wake up, you know. I, could keep I feel like I've been muted this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't. I could. Like people are listening to music, and there's like something else going on. I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I could just keep listening to you all night. It's lovely. I don't want you to stop. <laughs> uh, it, it's just lovely. It's lovely to hear you talk of your experiences and talk of what you've seen and it's just beautiful it's been really really lovely and I'm aware it's kind of just gone eight o'clock so if anyone does want to kind of say anything or do anything we 
better do it quickly so that we can let lovely Andy get on with his life. But <laughs> somebody, I just like to say thanks, Andy. That was really, really lovely. Really lovely. Oh. <laughs> thanks, Maria. Thank you. I think I think we're kind of all with you, Maria, on that. It, it was. It was just. It was beautiful. It was absolute pleasure we've been kind of trying to work this out and get you on our lovely people webinar for ages but i think you passed the criteria i think you truly are you've got the stamp of a lovely person you can you know <laughs> you've done it <laughs> great that's so good to hear. I, I i feel whole now yes absolutely being on a lovely people webinar is yes, what's that's where your home comes from <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, it does anyway yeah <laughs> um no, I, and I, I want to just thank everyone. I want to thank you for having me, really, and for doing this. Um, it's just such a, um, it's just so important to just get together and look in this direction. You know, whoever's talking or whoever's listening, and and um, and um, I mean, it 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 helps the world, the entire world, more than people realize because it's not just about us. It really. It affects the whole world when 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 people take the time to look in this direction and discover. You know, I feel like I know I've only got a glimpse of of it, and um, and it's changed me a lot. So um, anyway, thank you all for spending time and enduring my babbling. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a pleasure and. And um, I like I will be at that conference in September uh, if everything goes as planned. And I'll also be in Spain um, for uh, it looks like uh, for September, October, November, and the first part of December. Viva! And, um, uh, and so I'll be at Viva, and I'll be also working from from there too. So if um, you know, just people can keep that in mind. And if anybody found anything I said interesting and wants to chat more, we can figure out how to do that. Viva! Viva! Thank you, yeah. Andy. That was beautiful. I can't You're wait welcome. to hear you speak at our conference. <laughs> no, we, we can't. Yeah, we might. yeah, we can't. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be brilliant. So if anyone is interested, we're, we are having a conference here in North Devon from the 13th to the 15th of September. And the lovely Andy, now he's got his lovely people stamp, will be, um, <laughs> we'll be letting... <laughs> We'll let him in. Yeah, he's passed. <laughs> and Steph is on. Hi, Steph. Yeah, yeah a bit late. Oh, that's one of our other speakers. <laughs> hey. And I think Maria <laughs> might be there as well. We haven't managed to connect with her. Yeah. <laughs> Maria's going to be coming. So the, the conference is going to be pretty awesome, I think. It's kind of really, it's yeah. like you say, just allowing life to unfold. And very, very much. I mean, we've got Becky and Lou on here tonight and me and becky and lou we've just we're really kind of doing this whole let's let life unfold and see what unfolds and it's just been it's it's been amazing i mean we've had our ups and downs we've had those things you know life still does life as you say <laughs> it's not you don't get a free ride you don't get but it's just what's kind of unfolding for us is absolutely amazing and this conference and the the amazing people that are just seem to be coming into our life i mean look on this screen now there's some just beautiful people the lovely diane the lovely lisa andrea eric <laughs> and peter and karen uh, you know, Marie, suzanne it's just people have been at our retreats people we've just my life our world is just full of the most lovely people it's just unbelievable the way this is unfolding and like you say, it just continues to touch the world in the most amazing way. <laughs> I just feel totally, I think I'm going to do you now, Andy, and start to cry. It, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's wonderful. We're just having a ball and it, it's great. So, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you Dad, for organising this. It's, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for organising it. It's our pleasure. So we do this every week. Um, and Beck's going to have to tell me. I'm ever, it's gone out of my head. Who have we got next week, Beck? Who's our lovely person next week? Uh, duh, where are we next week? 
Oh, gosh, we're, we're at our retreat next week. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we're at our retreat. We haven't got a guest. That's Maybe. what I was thinking. Who is it? Why do I not know that? It's gone out my head. That'd be why. Yeah. We so, may be live from the retreat. It depends on the Wi Fi. Um, but the week after, we've got Chris Noonan, the lovely oh, yes. Chris Noonan. So if you, oh. we're not around next week, join us the week after. Yes, Suzanne's applauding. <laughs> <laughs> Very good <to> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we will try and do we will try and do something live from the retreat next week, but um, no promises. We don't know kind of you know what technology can be like. All the fun of the fair, the unfolding of life as it happens. So we'll kind of see. Yeah, so you have to come to the retreat instead. Yeah. So if you want, if you want to, if you want to join in the unfolding, you, anyone would be most welcome at the retreat. And I know there are a couple of people here who are actually local to where we live in North Devon. And we are going to, um, next Thursday, when we normally do our meeting in Roundswell, near Barnst in Barnstable, Roundswell, we're actually going to have our meeting at the retreat. So we're going to put on dinner, we're going to have a meal, and we're going to have a little... A little bit of a chat like we have here tonight but we'll all be there in person so if you're close enough to get to that we do need to know numbers so we will be kind of putting it out there to people but and even if you're not close enough and you fancy coming to the retreat you fancy staying over a couple of nights it'd be brilliant yeah, jump, on, jump on an airplane andy come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> bring you on daughter be perfect <laughs> so, yes yeah, so it's been a pleasure and it's been amazing guys and it, it's lovely to see so many of you here it's lovely to see some familiar faces really really lovely to connect with you all and apart from next week when we don't know what's happened we'll be doing it all again the wednesday after and <laughs> as though we ever know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, kind of look. Good one, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Beck's got to do list. So if anyone, yeah, does, yeah, yeah Beck. 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 <laughs> Beck's organising us. <laughs> I've never been so organised in my life. It's amazing. <laughs> I've never been so unorganised. <laughs> Anyway, it, it's been lovely, guys. If anybody, if anybody would like to just add something before we leave, please jump in quick. And if not, I think we'd better say good night and or good afternoon to Andy. Let him go and pick his beautiful daughter up. <laughs> so, I, I will in, unmute everybody, and we can all just say goodbye. I Stop think. Stop the recording as well. Oh yeah. Okay then. So I will. <laughs>